Hey everyone, Stephen here from More Config back with you for another tutorial video. This time we're going to cover a brand new feature in version 7, um, our integration uh, with Zabbix. And I guess if you're looking at this video, you probably know what Zabbix is, but if you don't, um, you know, it says it right here on their webpage, the all-in-one open source solution that lets you monitor everything. So we're fans of Zabbix. Um, a number of customers came to us last year and said, look, is it possible that our config could sync with Zabbix because we would like Zabbix to be our open, our uh, source of truth for network devices? And so if our config could sync with Zabbix, then we have only one place to really add or remove network devices. And so we thought that was a really great idea. Um, so we built the integration. We had it tested with a number of customers. It's working really well. So we wanted to put a tutorial video together for you. Now, there's a quite a bit to this. So it's going to be a little bit of a longer tutorial video this time. Um, but let's get right in. As I said, the use case is to sync hosts from Zabbix over to our config and have our config do its thing in terms of managing the configurations of those devices or those hosts. And so there's a few things to, to bear in mind when we think about taking that data from one platform to another. And the key one is how do we map? Because the data structures are not the same in both platforms. So that's the first thing we need to look at and think about. And then how do we set up the synchronization and test it, okay? So as with any good, and detailed um, feature. We've got extensive documentation on docs.orconfig.com um, on how to do this. And I would strongly recommend going through this video and the docs uh, before setting up the integration with Zabbix, okay? But let me talk you through some of the docs right now so it becomes clear what you really need to kind of focus on. So if I go to docs at and if I head into integrations and go to device sync overview to begin with, this uh, this particular doc is going to talk us through um, the supported versions. Okay, so as of today and 7.0, uh, the only integration we have at the moment is Zabbix. Now there is a backlog of integrations coming. Observium, Nagios, and a few others. And as customers come to us, the same as our uh, SSO integrations, uh, we'll build those out, okay? I'm gonna talk in a second about how the integration works because that's uh, it's necessary to understand how it works. I talked about uh, mapping a moment ago, so we'll, we'll touch on that. Um, and the actual Zabbix device integration, so the details on how to set up that integration is on this doc, Zabbix Device Sync. And so all the steps are here um, in this document with screenshots and everything. But what this video serves is kind of a shortcut, right? Because we're going to sequence through each of these steps and actually demonstrate how it works uh, on this video. Okay, let's get right into the weeds of it. So there's a couple of things to know about before we get started. Um, let's look at the requirements section here on the Zabbix Device Sync doc. So there's a couple of things that you kind of need to have set up in advance. Obviously, we need uh, V7 Professional um, or later. Um, we've only tested with the latest version of Zabbix, Zabbix 6.4.10 or later, right? Now, seven, version 7 of Zabbix is due out soon. Uh, it's under beta at the moment as, as of the making of this video. Um, I, I haven't seen any breaking changes to the API, uh, but I know there's changes to the API in previous versions, it's worth trying. Um, and if you have any issues, contact or config support. Um, you do need admin level access to Zabbix to set up a users and roles. Uh, you do need admin level access to our config. And obviously we need connectivity between um, the Zabbix and our config hosts. Um, from a design perspective, um, we'll need a user read access to the Zabbix API. Um, you will want to have an idea of which groups or tags um, that you, you'll want to filter on. I'll show you because you can filter, right, uh, when you set it up in our config per, by a host group or multiple host groups or, or tags and, or multiple tags. Um, the, the next one here I'm just going to touch on for a moment and we, we'll repeat ourselves a number of times around these tags. Hosts in Zabbix will need to have these or config styled tags. Um, added to them. 
And this is primarily for the mapping piece because Zabbix has no idea how Orconvig is set up. Orconvig has no idea how Zabbix is set up from a data modeling perspective. So we need to set up some tags that when we import the hosts over to Orconfig, that we have some way of referencing Orconfig attributes such as credentials, categories, Orconfig tags, vendor, and all the rest that you're used to in Orconfig. Okay. And so we'll see that we'll see that process in a few moments. Now, before we actually put pen to paper, as it were, or mouse click to screen, let's just talk about the process and how it works for a moment, okay? So to step back to device sync, um, it's based on what we call, and some of you may be familiar with this, some of you may not, it's what's called an ETL process. It's a very well-known process in um, data science and data engineering circles and you can see you can see the animation here on the screen and, and it is what you'd expect we extract host information from zabbix from the zabbix server database or api we need to do transformations and mapping on the data because the, the as i said several times the data model is just not the same there's a couple of data let's say attributes are the same host name ip address that's actually largely about it. So we need to transform the data into something that can be inputted to our configs database directly. And that's that's the final piece, the load piece, is where when it's transformed and mapped correctly, we can load it up. So keep that image in your mind as we step through it. One final thing to say before we actually get into it as well. All of the steps you're about to see hopefully are a one and done. In other words, you'll spend some time setting up the extract, setting up the transformation, doing the load and you you as an administrator of our config will do this a number of times once it's done and you're satisfied with the way everything is set up and designed a scheduled task at the end will do that load process uh, in perpetuity for you it'll just it'll just run it at your defined schedule and hopefully i expect as uh, time passes and you add hosts or remove hosts or whatever um that you, you'll have to tweak the ETL process very little, okay? But let's go through it. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, so I'm going to keep going back to the docs just to keep us um, on, uh, on target in terms of the steps we need to go through. And so the first step we can see is setting up Zabbix. Okay, so if I scroll down here, so we're going to set up Zabbix and um, we talk here about getting a user set up with the correct API permissions and that, but look, I have one done already. I have a user set up called our config user. Um, we've got a password. Uh, we have the group set up for that user. Uh, just to make it easy, I've just dropped the user type as system super admin. Um, but we have some permissions set up here, and uh, that's I think that's all really we need as long as there's connectivity between our config and the Zabbix server. Um, so, as I said, that's the first step. Get that set up. So the next step then is head back to our config and set up the Zabbix integration or connectivity to the Zabbix API. Uh, we've made this as easy as possible, so let's step through it here. And again, everything is is detailed in the docs in terms of how to do this. Uh, but let me talk you through it. So I'll head over to settings and integrations in V7, of course. Um, find the Zabbix integration and go configure it. Now, the first thing to notice, you see this error up here in the top right, which says no query results. Well, that's correct. Um, for ID one, and and the reason is we only allow one Zabbix integration configuration in our config and the reason is is we don't see use cases for having multiple um integrations we see one our config instance with one zabbix instance um, if there are use cases come talk to us and um, we can have that discussion but for now we're sticking with uh, kind of locking ourselves to one so this error will pop up uh, the first time you, you come in here and that's fine we can just x out of it and actually start to build out our configuration so let's do that right integration name we we'll call it zabbix1 uh, server base url now that is the url of the zabbix server without any path information okay nothing um even though the doc the zabbix docs was pointed to a certain path called zabbix underscore uh, rpc or something like that um we're just going to uh, put in the base URL because our code um, 
uh, does all the API uh, connectivity pieces in the back end. Sorry for for my slow language. Um, okay, and then what we're going to do is put in our user details. So we've got our config user, and I hope I get my password correct here. A very very secure password. Now the the next one I mentioned earlier about SSL verification. If we go back to the Tabix instance I have, we'll see that I have a certificate and it is an SSL connection, but this it's it's a self-signed cert. So even the browser browser here squawks an error. Um, it, I'm going to save this and I'm going to test the connection. We're going to see what happens when I have an SSL cert. So that's exactly what I expected. SSL certificate problem, self-signed cert. We're asking the API connection to verify the certificate is correct and that the host for the certificate is correct, uh, but it knows it's not, right? So it's going to give us an error. So we can bypass that by unticking these. Not recommended. I'd prefer if you had a good, healthy certificate on the on the Zabbix server, but you know that option's there for testing and, and development purposes. You can, of course, also filter the host. So if you think about that extract of hosts from Zabbix, probably what you don't want to do in most cases is extract all of the hosts. You might have servers in there, you might have other devices which are not network devices which you don't need um, imported into our config. So, so you can filter by tags, you can filter by host groups. So filtering by tags is pretty easy. Put in your tag name, your key. Uh, you have a few operator options here. Equals, let's just say yes, and don't forget to add that tag. You see it drop in down here, okay? Um, you can add host groups also, uh, but we just ask that you get the actual ID of the host group, and which is really easy to get. So if you go to your Zabbix instance, head to uh, data collection, host groups, um, you can hover over one, and if you look right down at the bottom of the screen, you'll see the URL and the number four at the end. So that would be your host group ID, or else you can just open uh, the, the, the click on the host group, and it'll come up here into the main bar. So for this particular host group, the ID is 26. It's pretty easy to retrieve. And just pop that in there, and it's one ad per host group. Okay, And of course, you can do multiple tags and multiple host groups. Now... So we'll save this. I'm not going to do a filter for a specific reason, which I'll show you shortly. I'm going to test my credentials. Perfect. All green, and we have our Zabbix uh, Server API version returned. And we're going to test our credentials, and perfect. Um, what the credential test does is just does, gives you a count of all hosts, uh, unfiltered. Uh, so if you're looking at this number and it doesn't align with what you think maybe you have in your host, these filters are not applied to this call. It's just a, a total host count. It's just for the purposes of uh, testing your credentials. Okay, so that's the first main step out of the way. We are now fully connected to the Zabbix server. So jumping back to our docs, just to remind ourselves of the process. So setting up Zabbix, tick. Setting up our config, that's done. And next thing we're going to do is extract the hosts from the Zabbix server. So let's go to, you can click next down here. You can click on the extract list tab up here. Okay, we'll ignore that. Thank you. Uh, and you can see we have an empty uh, panel here. So what we're going to do, so these three buttons, essentially you will run them in order. Look, if, if you hit run transform and mapping and there's nothing in here, nothing's going to happen. If you attempt to load to device staging table and nothing's in your extract table, nothing's going to happen, right? I'm going to show you a quick image here just to give you a visual on this. So we go in this order. We run extract from Zabbix, then we run the transform and mapping, then we load to the device staging table, okay, in that order. So let's go ahead and run extract from Zabbix. This should take a moment. I don't have many hosts. Yeah, there it is. Perfect. Okay. So, so what? Seven hosts, right? We have the Zabbix server itself. We have a de our config development box, and we've got three, um, uh, sorry, five uh, uh, devices. Okay. Um, Stacky test host. Uh, here, a little nugget. If anybody's listening and paying attention to the video, my nickname growing up was Stacky. There you go. Something you did not know about me before. Anyway, so a couple of things about this table. Um, first of all, we can view items in Zabbix just by clicking the link here, and that'll open the, the, the device or the host first, and that's kind of useful. You can actually remove items from the extract list manually. If I remove this one, it'll be deleted out of the list. 
And as you go through the rest of the process, um, uh, obviously that one won't go through the process and end up in the devices table, uh, in the main or config devices table. However, unless filtered properly, the next time the process runs end to end, uh, which I'll, I'll repeat later on, uh, this host will come back in. So removing it here is a bit, um, you, you would only do it for development purposes. Uh, the next thing is you can you can expand these fields and actually show the raw data that was um, imported from Zabbix. Again, useful for development purposes to make sure your tags are in place and, and everything like that. Okay, um, but other than that, actually quite useless at the moment because it is literally a raw extract. So we're going to run the transform and mapping and see what happens. So if I click this button. Integration transform started, page will refresh, and there it was refreshed. All right, now we're getting some meaning and context in our table. Okay, so the reason I didn't do a filter on the configuration page was I did want to see some invalid hosts here, and I did want to see some valid hosts, right? So I think ultimately you will want a filter applied, be it a tag or host group, so is that you know by the time you run your transfer, transformation and, and mapping processes, um, you will have all green valid hosts here, okay? But again, I, I just want to demonstrate it. So if I expand the Zabbix server, there is nothing in here in terms of output, and our raw data shows us that if you look at tags, we are missing a bunch of tags, okay? And the invalid reason is down here as well, one or more tags missing from the host. This error is also in our status and logs table here, okay? So you can see here, one or more tags missing from host. And if I expand the detail, uh, it'll tell us uh, the integration and um, yeah. So going back to the extract list, if I look at a valid host, what we have then down here is all of our tags, okay? And we can see all our tags are good. Uh, it's marked valid. So if I keep going down, we've got no invalid reasons. Uh, it is not invalid. Uh, invalid would be one, not invalid is zero. Okay, and so all good there. Um, and I guess the final piece is to, well, not the final piece, it's, I guess, a step three or four, is to load it into the device staging table. So go ahead and click the load to device staging table and let's observe this process for a moment. Now the page doesn't refresh automatically here. So depending on how many hosts you have, you know, if you're in the hundreds or thousands, you might want to wait a minute or two but go ahead and open the device staging list or table. And again, we'll see some fairly sparse detail in here, okay? Um, so we have a host name and IP address, and we can now show the details for uh, each of these hosts. Now, what you, the first thing to note is that the invalid hosts did not come over, nor should they. If a host is marked invalid, it will not go over to the device staging list, which means if you remove this host, for example, from the extract, it doesn't matter. It still won't go over. It won't go over in either circumstance, okay? So what we have is five valid hosts, and I'm gonna talk about why they're valid right now. So we, we mentioned, I'm gonna bring up the, the part of the docs here where this is mentioned in detail. Let me see my tags, these ones, okay? So your Zabbix hosts must have eight or config tags attached to them. And those tags, just bring them one up here to show you, must, the values of those tags must align to certain values within the or config deployment you have, okay? So let's take category, for example. So if I go to or config and if I go to categories, I have a category called, what was that one? Switches, okay? Uh, it's also an ID of two. Now, for the value for most of these, um, you can either use the name or the ID, either or, okay? Uh, for category, credentials, model, template, and vendor, it can only be one of, okay? Uh, one vendor by ID or name, one template by ID or name. But tags, you can actually do more. You can do... Um, and, and you can mix them if, if you wanted to do that uh, to um, to populate more 
to populate more R config tags on the R config side of the device. We'll see that in a few minutes, okay? What's important is that the transformation and mapping process will fail if any of these tags are not present or any of these values are not correct values in R config, okay? And the way we've set it up, so if I change this to two, watch this, right? Credential set, I know for a fact I do not have a credential set uh, with a value of two. So what's gonna happen is if I go back to, if I go back to the integrations, go to the extract list, I'm gonna run the extract again, all right? No issues, we'll get the raw data. We, now, what, which, which host was that? Let's take a peek. Oh my God, this one, 108, 4, 5, I think. No, it wasn't. 10844. Yeah, 10844. So this guy has a tag with a credential set of two. So what's going to happen is when I run the transform, this one's going to fail. See? And the reason for failure. Credential set value for tag or config credential set does not exist in our config. So you've got to go back, put in the right one, come back, run your extract. It's worth pointing out these processes are quite ephemeral and siloed. So, so you'll notice I keep doing it over and over again until I get it right, okay? And that it's designed that way so you can build it up and, and basically develop this process yourself. Now, what happened there? 1844 tags one credential set one let me just run the extract again 10844 show the data credential set is one uh, it could have failed because of this uh, let's see run transform and map because I updated that I should have left it really it's just one because I don't know if those are valid and I'm betting they're not um, the tag value for tag doesn't exist. So I'm just going to revert that back to one, right? I'm, I'm guessing perhaps switches doesn't exist as a tag value. Okay, so let me just let me just change that. This is kind of good because you kind of see um, the process being run through a few times. So I've updated, run the extract, run the transform. Perfect. Loaded staging. Okay, and the device staging list, and for uh, 10844, uh, everything's in place, and you can even click link, click these are internal or config links back to the individual attributes or components. Okay, okay, um, I did say this is going to take a few minutes, so I hope you're still with me on the process, and uh, I hope it's all making sense. Uh, shoot, shoot a note. Uh, in the comments or, or ping me directly, stephen at rconfig.com, info at rconfig.com, if any of this is not making sense. Um, but look, let's finish it up in the last few steps. So if I, in the device staging list, it looks like I have a bunch of good devices. They will not be in here if they are not good devices, right? That that matters. The the These two steps make sure they're good devices, the transformation of mapping and the load process does an extra couple of verification checks. And so, it's at this point we can load the devices here, which is in a table called the devices staging table, which is very similar to the main or config devices state uh, main or config devices table. It's just not the main or config devices table. Okay, and so there's two buttons here. Then run assessment and run full deployment. Now, what a run assessment will do is it will do all of the steps in sequence connectivity, extract, transform, and mapping. And we've, we've merged those, they, they are two separate steps, but we have merged them for simplicity's sake, and the load. So an assessment will do everything up to the load. A full deployment, that will do all of the steps and put them into the main or config devices table. So let's have a quick peek. Those devices are not in there presently. So let's go back, let's run the assessment. Now, why am I doing it? Well. Just for demonstration purposes but essentially it's done because we did all of those steps manually so if you're kind of at a point in your development process here where you're thinking no i'm good like i can clear out the extract list and i, I can just run through all of the steps and just just give me the output here and the final device list you can do that okay um 
if you run the assessment and let's say this table is empty, it will be populated so you at least will be able to go back and see which hosts are valid or invalid and the reasons for it. Now, what I'm going to do then is run the full deployment, which as I said, does uh, the extract, the transform, the loading and the deployment into um, the devices table. So just giving that one moment and what we should see when we pop over to the device. So we see two things actually. This staging table empties, okay? Um, if I just refresh the page. So the table is empty if devices have already been loaded to, to production devices table or hosts have not been pushed uh, from extract to staging yet. So it does empty out the staging list and it puts those devices into, here we go, there's a few of them here, into um, the devices, uh, the main devices table. What, what's interesting, there's a couple of things to note then, um, just on this before I move on to the command line and syncing devices before we wrap up. Um, the devices, and, and we'll change this number for different integrations, but these devices do begin with this kind of four letter um, prefix, let's call it, from an ID perspective to really kind of have them stand out. So Zabbix integrations are always going to be 9,000. We think Observiums would be 9,001, but we'll come back to that. We also add in this little icon here, uh, an integration imported device. So visually, you know that this came from your integration, in this case, Zabbix. And if I log into or sorry, if I open the device itself, you'll also see that same icon here. You'll also see a, an open and Zabbix link. All right, so again, conveniently, uh, we put this link in here just so you can pop open that device from our config if you need to manage it in any other way. So I guess the last thing to talk about, well, actually the second last thing to talk about is, is syncing devices on a, a recurring basis. So. That's, there's a bit of hard work, um, I will admit it, uh, in developing the process and making sure that your tags are in place and your connectivity is in place and all that kind of stuff, right? But once it is and you're satisfied, you know, you've run through the full deployment piece a couple of times and you're satisfied that your devices are uh, in place um, in the device, in the main devices table, then it's time to turn on a recurring sync. Uh, one thing to note about the recurring sync or, or devices being sent back into the devices table. Existing devices don't get overwritten. They can't be overwritten because if they do, we lose the kind of configuration aspect of them. Once they're in here with the correct parameters, they will fall into whatever schedule tasks uh, are running from a category or tags perspective. So if we've got a schedule task to download commands for this particular device and it's in the router's, uh, router's tag, um, that, that these devices will just fall into that scheduled task. But to actually sync them over on a recurring basis, let's set up a new task here. Uh, you will see in V7 our tasks windows updated a little bit, but right down here we have um, an integration job task, right? So if I click that and let's say Zabbix sync, let's say Zabbix sync once a week, and let's go next. And then there's a simple option here just to select from the configured integrations. Now, okay, our database went, we went a bit crazy and added a bunch of them, but you know, we're on a demo box, so just pretend you didn't see that. And so pick, pick your Zabbix integration, pick your schedule uh, twice a day, once a week, you know, first and 15th, first and 16th, whatever you need, right? And click next and save that task. Now, what happens? once a week when you do this or two days a month or whatever it is is just popping in here the full deployment runs it just runs end to end the extract the transform and mapping the load to staging the load to uh, main production devices that's the process that runs um every uh every every recurring schedule okay um well, what i want to show you now and we're going to wrap up with this one, is the command version of this. Okay, let me jump back to the docs here for a second. So in the Zabbix um, device sync doc, if I just pop down the end, um, there's some information here on the uh, command. So basically, at a simple level, a lot of things in our config are actually, actually end up as command line 
um, commands, I guess. Um, and, and many of you will have seen this where you do an orconfig colon uh, clear hyphen all or you do or your troubleshooting is done in the command line. So it shouldn't be unusual to you. But basically every step in the process is a command line switch for this particular command. I'm going to run through this in a second. So the connection, the credential test, the extract, the transform, the mapping, the load, the assessment, the deployment, they're all here as commands, okay? And so I would often defer to the command line to get to move through this process. So you have to set up the initial connection in the UI um, and maybe do your tests in the UI too, which you can fall back to the command line uh, or config integrations avix command uh, for maybe deeper analysis of what's going on okay so if i run this command so uh, again many of you will know cd into your or config 7 slash current directory and your command is php artisan or config uh, integration hyphen zabbix now if i run this command on its own nothing's going to happen it's just going to give me the bunch of options available to me if i do a minus minus help i get uh, a little bit more context on those options. So I'll use the shortcut um, uh, options here just to just to go through some of it, right? So if I do a Zavix minus C, it will just test the connection. And similar to what you saw on the UI, um, it just give, it's just giving us a server API version. Same with the credential, uh, with the user credential test. So let's just jump straight to the extract. So because everything's in place then, so you don't get the full output here in terms of the devices that have been synced. You just get that message saying seven devices have been extracted to the staging table. Um, for the purposes of kind of being verbose, the transformation and mapping are separate command line switches um, on the CLI. So let's do a minus T. So this will just do, a, 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 technically this will do a diff between the Zabbix host list and the or config host list based on name and IP address, okay, to see which ones could be moved over. Let's do the mapping. And so this will actually give you a table then and tell you which hosts pass or fail uh, mapping. Um, and we will know from looking at the UI shortly ago, we'll see that the Zabbix server has failed and the uh, V7 dev1 server has failed where the rest have passed, okay. And so back up to our switches here for a second. Uh, the last one is the load. That's going to bring us up to the staging table. And it's all really quick. So five devices loaded up to the staging table. That's lovely. And then there's two two final switches, which exactly re directly relate to, and I'm going to bring it up here in the UI, the run assessment and the run full deployment. So it's minus A for the assessment and minus D for the deployment. So if I run a minus A, you see it went through all of the steps, right? That's what I meant by it goes through the connection, the extract, the transform, the mapping validation, and the load. But what it doesn't do is bring it up to the devices table. And the final one, if I do minus D, five devices loaded to production devices table. And let's just pop back to the production devices table. Let me get my window here. There we go. And move over and we have our, we have, no, technically nothing happened with those devices um, in terms of, in data terms, because they already existed and the load piece knows that if they already exist, just to update any values, um, let's say the IP address changed or you wanted to change or you changed the vendor for some reason on the Zabbix site and you did that sync over, they would change on the R config site. So look, that's, that's a long video. There's a lot in there. Um, go through it again, pause it, understand it a little bit. Go through these docs, right? When you run through the process once or twice, uh, it'll become very clear. Um, depending on how many hosts you have to update on the Zabbix site, uh, it might take you a short while or a long while. But, you know, reach out to support, reach out to me when you're setting these up uh, if you need any assistance. Um, hope it was helpful. Thanks so much, guys.